How's everybody doing? It's great to see you again. How many of you expected me to be here? <laughs> Katie Wyndham right there. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to steal your thunder. <laughs> Jenny, are you okay? You good? Great. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with Alabama. A reminder to please uh, silence all phones, electronic devices, and then when you get the mic to ask a question, to give your name and affiliation. Uh, we are joined by Alabama head coach Patrick Murphy and players Kayla Beaver and Jocelyn Brisky. Uh, we'll start with a opening statement from Coach Murphy. Well, and then thanks, get a thank you so much. And thanks for being here. Um, you know, the name of the game is fast pitch softball. Not fast run, not fast hit, not fast defense. And the reason we're here is because of these two young ladies, fast pitch. They're two pitchers. And they have done a tremendous job all year. And we always try to, we, we preach, the defense and the pitching stays constant. If we can scratch a run, we're gonna win. And they've basically done that all year. And both of them, they're brand new to the program. Uh, Miss Beaver is a grad student, a transfer from Central Arkansas. And Jocelyn is a freshman from Phoenix, Arizona. But they have done a tremendous job, and I'm so glad that they're up here with me. And um, you guys can get to know them. But this was a, um, it was a difficult year. And you know, I said this to our parents at a banquet that was the senior banquet in April. We played Tennessee that day. And before we played Tennessee, we had this uh, senior brunch. And if you ask every parent in the world, what do you want for your kid? The number one answer is, I want them to be happy, right? 100%. But you know what? Not everybody's happy every single day. And you go through trials and tribulations. And that was our year. We went through the stuff. And now we see the light at the end of the tunnel, and that's Oklahoma City. And we persevered. We got through it. Nobody quit. Um, it was one of the most uh, enjoyable teams to coach because they didn't quit. And, um, and now we're here. And we're going to relish every second because there's no bad day at the College World Series. All right, we'll open up for questions. Okay, we've got a second round on the left here. Um, Katie went to Bama Central for Murph and then for Kayla. Um, you've talked about this being a gratifying year for you, just but how gratifying is it for Kayla to come here in her last year and then give this opportunity to end her career at the Women's College World Series? And then for Kayla, for you, was that part of the reason you wanted to come to Alabama for the opportunity to play in OKC? Well, I said it uh, at Tennessee in the locker room after we won that 14-inning game. Almost every kid on this roster said, I want a chance to play at the College World Series. I want a chance to play at the Women's College World Series. And we were in Super Regionals. That means you're two wins away. We have a chance, so now we got to take it. And she said the exact same thing to us on her visit. I want an opportunity to play at the highest level. I want to play in the, at the College World Series. And sometimes it doesn't work, right? And we never take this for granted because I remember the first time, and I said to my SID, John, I don't want to be a one-hit wonder. And you never know. And I'm so glad that she gets to experience this uh, because she has been terrific and you guys get to experience what she brings to the table. Yeah, uh, bouncing off of that, you know, getting to come here, it was special, you know, just to wear the A. I mean, that was something that I really wanted to do this entire time. And getting to play and finish my season here is, I mean, honestly, like, I, it still doesn't even seem real. Like, I feel like I'm in a dream every second that I've been here already. And getting to, you know, pitch beside Brisky and get to have the team that I have behind me. It's, it's something special and getting to do it here is, it's incredible. More questions, front row left, Jenny. Hey Patrick, I know you're focused on UCLA, <clears throat> but obviously them being in that Pac-12 tradition that is coming to an end. I'm wondering if you can just offer any perspective on just what the Pac-12 as a collective has meant to the sport and where it is today. Shoot everything. I mean, the first time I came here, I might have even talked to you, and I said, I want to be like Mike, Mike Candrea. That was the goal of every male coach. That was the role model, was Mike Candrea. And obviously, we all know UCLA is the gold standard. UCLA, Arizona. 
And it is, it is a sad day. It really is. I think whoever made the decisions did not do them for the right reasons. There's no way in hell that Cal and Stanford should be going to Virginia Tech, Florida State, Syracuse. Are you kidding me? Those are two great academic institutions. And somebody made that decision? All of us in this room could have said, nah, that's not a good decision. So that's my opinion on that. Um, but the Pac-12, that, that was what you played for. You know, we want to beat the Pac-12. First time we came, we had to go to Arizona State. We had never beaten a Pac-12 school. And it was the year 2000, we got sent to Arizona State and Hall of Fame coach Linda Wells, and it was like, oh gosh, here we go again. And then we, we broke through that door, and it was like the biggest thing in the world for little Alabama to go to a Pac-12 school and beat them twice on their field. That was like, that was a huge deal. So it's, it's a sad day to see that end because honestly, they've been great in a ton of sports, but to me, softball, synonymous with the Pac-12, up and down. I mean, Arizona State, Washington, Cal. I mean, look how many national champions are in that league. A ton. And Stanford's here now. All right, we'll stay on the front row left with Joe. Patrick, on the, on the flip side of that, do you see the SEC becoming that power if it's not already, especially with the additions of Oklahoma and Texas? Oh. You had to bring that up, didn't you? <laughs> Jeez. I just, I don't even want to think about it because, uh, you know, when, when the seeding came out, one, two, and then I think there was eight SEC, right? So 10 of the 16 seeds were going, eventually going to be SEC. So it is going to be, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be amazing to begin with. And again, I sat here and said, when A&M and Missouri joined, the two best sports at those two schools was softball. Missouri had been here three years in a row, and a and had just played for the national championship. Not baseball, not basketball, not football. The best sport at those two schools was softball, and they both come in at the same time. I can make the case for softball and the same thing with OU and Texas. They're both here. They're one and two. No other sports at their schools are one and two. I think it's going to be tremendous. We already sell out. You know, when OU comes to us, and they're coming to us next year, everybody can come. You're all invited. <laughs> it's in the middle of April, and it is going to be a premium game, just like when LSU comes to play football at, at Alabama or Auburn or OU or Texas. It'll be a premium game, and it'll be a big deal because it should be. Unrelated, um, Mike White said in the last couple of days that it's – this is a huge advantage for the World Series to be here for Oklahoma uh, and would like to see it be rotated as, as far as the site goes. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. There's not a comparable space. You know, we don't have, you know, Dodger Stadium and Wrigley Field and Fenway Park. We have this place. And I don't, I don't see anybody else, you know, going to pony up now probably 60 million, 70 million to build a facility like this, a press room like this, locker rooms like we have, the, f the fields behind where we practiced, the locker rooms, I don't, and you're not going to do it overnight. It's going to take at least three or four years, right? Um, I don't know. I feel like this is becoming Omaha. Creighton was good in baseball. Nebraska's really good this year in baseball. You know, if they go to the World Series, it adds another spice to the, to the tournament. You know, and I think us, we're like, deal with it. Norman's, what, 29 miles away, 29 minutes? All right, we'll go third row left. Morgan Uber with the SEC Network. A question for Jocelyn and Kayla, for you guys. You know, to come off the Super Regional against Tennessee, a familiar foe after going through just the gauntlet of what <laughs> the SEC is all season long, how does that competition prepare you for this stage that you'll have ahead of you this week? You know, I think it I think it prepares us for everything. You know, Tennessee was selected to be a national championship team and they were a contender for it and they were an amazing competition. And the SEC, you know, like Murph said, I mean it's crazy. The competition is insane. And I think that we're more prepared than we could have been. And, you know, getting to play somebody familiar, I think it made it a way more fun. And, you know, we did what we did and now we're here to do it some more. And also, like, along with 
what happened at Super Regionals. I mean, the 14 in game, like we, we've done it all. We've seen it all. We had two of those this year. And I just think this team is very well prepared for what's to come and anything can happen. And we all believe in ourselves too. So I'm really excited. And can I add to that? <laughs> we're the ninth place team in the SEC and we're at the World Series. All right, we'll go front row, uh, right? Tara Henry, Softball America. This is for Kayla and Jocelyn. Uh, can you describe to us what it was like for the two of you to step on that field for the first time? Obviously something you probably have dreamt about since you were uh, a young softballer. Murph, this is not for you. You've been here a few no, times. No. Uh, but for you, Kayla and Jocelyn, can you describe to us what that was like? Um, it, was, it was so cool. Um, just walking across, I mean, We've obviously played at Rhodes and we play in the SEC. You go to pretty hostile environments there. And I mean, Rhodes is a hostile environment itself, and but it doesn't compare to this. Um, but I'm just really excited to just soak it all in and the adrenaline and everything, um, taking them out and stuff. Like, I'm really excited for it. Yeah, for me, you know, the past four years, I, I was watching it from home and getting to be a part of it, like, again, it, it still feel it doesn't feel real like it feels like it still hasn't even hit me yet and I don't know the adrenaline the environment it's something so crazy to be a part of and I'm just truly blessed that I get to be a part of it with this team there's nobody else I'd rather do it with and I don't know just going back to everything that we've done this year I I'm so proud that we're here and get to play in this environment and again being here is just it's absolutely incredible No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for you, can you talk a little bit about the second half of the season, just utilizing a little bit more of small ball and, and how you seem to utilize that and use it to your advantage? Yeah, I think um, all of the assistants had to kind of like kick me in the butt and say, we need to do something, okay? It, whatever we're doing is not working. And so we really started working on hit and run, slap and run, button and run, you know, uh, delayed steal, steal, all of it. And uh, a little bit at a time, and I think it, the second game against Southeastern and regionals, where it's 1-1 in the ninth and we get a pinch hit home run for two runs, and then we pile on three more, I think that kind of started the, everybody took a deep breath and we can do this. And then the next day we scored nine runs in the bottom of the first and had 10 hits in one inning. And it just kind of like, everybody took a deep breath. And then we kind of, and obviously T Tennessee has the best pitching staff probably in the country, and you're not going to score you know, nine runs. But I think we put the ball in play well. We didn't strike out a lot. Made them make plays, and that was the key. Because you put the ball in play, good things are going to happen. All right, we got second round on the left, Cliff. Yeah, Cliff Brown, Associated Press. I asked the, the other coaches this, I'll ask you. Um, you're aware of the agreement with the NCAA and the conference is paved in the way for uh, schools to pay athletes directly. Uh, softball's obviously grown. This development obviously could affect it. A big picture in the sport, do you worry that this change could divert funds from softball towards lakes like paying football or basketball players? Or do you believe there's enough momentum in the sport uh, and there's enough of a priority that it could be beneficial? Well, a couple of years ago, they did a uh, story in the Tuscaloosa News, and the third highest revenue producer in Alabama was softball. It was football, and then men's basketball, and softball. And we were all proud of that. You know, we've charged uh, tickets from day one because we think it's a sport that, you know, you need to pay to watch it. And our fans have showed up like crazy. You know, we've led the nation in tennis for like 17 straight years. Um, I, I really don't think so. And I, you know, I think my boss, Greg Byrne, is um, great at what he does. And he is going to figure it out along with a lot of other really good ADs and make this work. You know, we had the banquet last night and I talked to a couple of the other ADs. They almost said the same exact thing that Greg has been telling the head coaches at Alabama. Just, we're gonna, we're gonna figure this out. It's the new normal. And we've said that for how many years in a row now? You guys are probably sick of that. But it's true. NIL, Portal, and now House versus NCAA. And I, there's a lot, of, a lot of smart people, a lot smarter than me, that make those decisions. Um, and hopefully they'll, they'll get us on the right path. All right, we'll go front row left, Jenny. Patrick, just to piggyback on Tara's question about small ball, you don't see as much slapping in college softball anymore. I'm wondering what the challenge is when you – I mean, I can't imagine there are as many recruits that are slappers. Like, how do you develop that at a time when it's just not as prevalent as it used to be? I know. And, uh, you know, the first time we um, 
went to the NCAA tournament, we were shut out, one to nothing, seven to nothing. And I was recruiting in the summer, and I saw Mike Candrea, and he was like, hey, how'd it go, how'd it go? And I said, well, we got shut out twice. And he says, you know, in big time softball, the pitching dominates. And every now and then, all you need is to put a, a ball on the ground, and something good might happen. And you know, at the time, they had probably four or five slappers. And um, so the next year, I had three lefties in the lineup. We come to the World Series and win 66 games. So I think there's a balance um, between the two. And obviously, our leadoff had a great super regional. She had a great regional. She's the fastest kid on the team. Um, and I still believe, you know, when we had Alexis Mack, Caleb Rowe, Brittany Rogers, you know, Jennifer Fenton, in the game of softball, if you can put a bunt where you want it, nobody throws you out. They, you could tell everybody in the crowd, I'm bunting, and you're still safe. I've saw, I've seen it. Alexis Mack could do it every single time. So there is, but you have, obviously you have to be fast. The defense is so much better. Yes, athletes all over the place, great athletes everywhere. But I still think that at Tennessee, we put the ball in play, you know, and they have really, really good pitching. So there, I, I think there is a spot for it still. Um, Got to have really good bat control. All right, this is our last question, second round of left. Kayla, you said you've been watching from home the last four years, but for both of you as pitchers, I have to ask if you're watching the last time Alabama and UCLA played in the World Series, Montana for the perfect game, and just uh, what you remember from watching that from maybe a pitcher standpoint. Oh, yeah, I do remember watching that. <laughs> I was sitting on my couch, and I was like, holy crap, she really just did that. And I was in, you know, Anybody, and I think Jocelyn can vouch, you know, every, everybody wants that moment. Everybody wants to do that. And, you know, coming in, that's a lot of shoes to fill. You know, she's incredible. And I knew that coming into it. And it was one of those things that I could let it, you know, run all over me and take over and, you know, try so much to be like her. And, you know, she's somebody that I look up to. She is. And I just knew that coming in, I had to, I had to be me. Because if I tried to be somebody that I wasn't, then I wasn't going to be successful. And I think, you know, working alongside people like Jocelyn and Jayla and Alex and Ailey and Lauren, you know, this entire bullpen staff is its something special. We all have something different, and getting to come in and work with them has made me so much better. And so, you know, like I said, going back to that, you know, it's incredible. And I would love to do that. <laughs> I would. I'm not going to lie. And so we're just going to, you know, take it one pitch at a time and see what we can do. And this whole year, we've kind of relied on using the staff a lot. Um, we talked about it before, like, all of us are so different from each other, and a lot of us complement each other very well. And whoever's turn it is to get the job done, we're going to root for them. And if it's our turn, then we're going to take advantage of our opportunity. But it's just really going to be trying not to let the moment get too big and just have that person's back, whoever's out there on the mound. All right, that'll wrap things up for Alabama. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thank you.